This is a demonstration of what we do with the measurements of the LV and aortic pressures in the cath lab in which we collect this data and then we use an old-fashioned method of planimetry of the area in between the aortic valve and the LV to calculate the mean gradient and eventually the aortic valve area. We're using Photoshop extended in this example and uh, the reason why we do this is because we are trying to use in an old-fashioned method which is planimetry but now we're trying to use uh, scanned versions of this and where we scan it into Photoshop and there is a measurement program in the uh, extended version which is for students, the student and uh, teacher version. So with this we can figure out what the aortic valve area and the mean gradient is and we will show you in this demonstration. Thank you. All right, so the first step is to scan the left ventricular and aortic pressures in. And I scan these things at at least 300 dpi and use the black and white or grayscale settings. You don't obviously need color and I scan them as JPEG files. Either the LV or the aortic pressure tracing first, then in Photoshop, rotate the thing clockwise to get it horizontal, and then open the second scan, which was that one. Rotate that one clockwise. I have the two documents in two separate, the scans in two separate documents, one and two. So you have to get them in the same document in order to superimpose the two tracings. So it doesn't matter which one you do which, this one is a smaller document so I'll pick it and I select the whole document under edit here. Um, select all. Normally I don't do it this way. Command A selects all <laughs> and Command C is copy. So I'm going to go back to the other document and Command V is paste. Alright. Now the one document is on top of each other in the two layers as you can see. Now how do I how do I get it so that I can see one la both layers at the same time? The trick here is to go to the blend modes and select multiply for the blend mode. And multiply will allow me to see both layers simultaneously. Because what multiply does is that anything that is darker on the top layer then what's on the bottom layer will show up and that's exactly what I want to happen so then I can take the go to the move key up here the move tool and move these things around so what I'm going to do is to superimpose these two and I'm using the obviously the uh, lines for the pressure to get the baseline proper and hopefully the peak pressures will line up too. Then I'm going to use either the arrow keys or I can use the mouse to get the pressures to line up horizontally once I have them lined up vertically. So I'm lining up on the, the notch of the aortic pressure here and here with the first ventricular pressure. You notice that the aortic pressure 
the aortic rate here is a little bit slower than the LV rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the LV tracing out a little bit. So I'm going to hit go to Command T, which is transform, and I'm going to pull out the LV pressure tracing just a hair to match the underlying aortic pressure, just like that. Once I get that done, I'm going to I'm going to key return, which sets the transformation. Uh, then I go. To, I can enlarge these tracings by doing going to the Z key on the keyboard, and that gives me the uh, magnifying glass. And I can click on this to enlarge, holding down the Option key at the same time lets me make things smaller with this in this key with this tool selected it's also available over here on the toolbar right there and the Z key is the thing I usually use so now I'm going to want to pull out some guides and what I do is go over here to the ruler on the left and pull out I have to pick three beats starting with a diastole and so there's the first diastole I'll pick out another ruler so I go over here until the cursor turns to an arrow hold down the mouse and pull out the second one until it reaches where I want and then let go and now to here if I want to move one of these around I need to go up here and change to the move tool up at the top of the toolbar or use the V key which is the keyboard equivalent to it and then I can move one of these around if I want to so I'm going to get another ruler and put it here another one in here so that's one two beats And that's it. That's three diastoles and three systoles. Move that one over just a hair. Is it 50? The main gradient. We're working on it. All right. So the first thing I need to do for the equation calculation is to calculate these three areas. So CS6 extended has an analysis package that allows me to do this. The first thing that needs to be done is to set the measurement scale so that the analysis package knows that whatever area it calculates here on the screen is converted to whatever measurement is on this paper. And so my colleague has already measured this dimension from the from the zero line to the 200 line on the paper with a ruler and I'm going to enter that into the measurement package. It's found in CS6 here under image analysis set measurement scale custom right there and the pixel length is not what I'm going to set. I'm going to go over here and this defaults to the ruler tool now on the toolbar and so I'm going to start here at the top of the zero line and hold the shift key down so this is a straight line and I'm going to go up to the top of the 200 mark like that and let go so that says that that's 1176 pixels on the screen now according to the measurement on the paper that was 9.9 .9 centimeters 9.9 .9 centimeters so the logical length here is in centimeters so that means that this nine, this 1176 centimeter, excuse me, pixels on the screen represents 9.9 .9 centimeters on the actual paper. And that's the only time I need to do this. And I click OK. So now it knows anything I measure on this, on the computer here, will be converted to the appropriate number of centimeters. So the first thing I need to measure is the area between circumscribed by this first beat. 
so I'm going to go back to the Z key and make this bigger a couple of times so that I can see it well. Go to the pin tool and I'm going to make a clockwise drawing around this beat. Now this is not going to be an instruction as to how to use the pin tool. There are plenty of tutorials online about how to use the pin tool. Basically I'm making an outline between these two drawings here. Now once I have that completed, I'll go over here to the path menu and I'll hold down the option key on the keyboard and this dotted circle here, I'll click on that, make sure I don't have any feather radius checked because that will not work on this one. I want a feather radius of zero, new selection, OK. So now you see the usual Photoshop marching ants around here. And so I want to measure the area subtended by these marching ants. So I'll go back to Image, Analysis, Record Measurements. The keyboard equivalent for this is Shift-Command-M, which I'll use subsequently. So I click on that. And this first measurement here, the area is 3.53, so 3.5 square centimeters. I'm only going to use two-digit accuracy because there's other measurements in this thing, mainly the cardiac output, that are not accurate to more than really two digits. So I don't need to measure the accuracy more than that. So 3.5 is the first area in centimeters between these two. So now I'm going to move over here and do the second one. This will automatically cancel out this first one being selected when I do this or I'll do command D which will deselect this thing either way. So now I'm going to start here go around this thing clockwise again with the pen tool. The pen tool is using a method called BZA curves which is as I said explained in multiple tutorials that you can get online on Adobe's website they have a nice tutorial on using the pen tool so I'll go over here now that I know that there's no feathering selected in the selection thing here. I'll just click on this once and I'll get the marching ants and this time I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut which is command shift M and now the measurement number two here is the area is 3.8 right there 3.8. I'm not clear why it gives me this twice sometimes it does that and sometimes it doesn't but it's Measurement 2, you see, is 3.8. So Command D gets rid of those marching ants. And I'm going to measure this area here. So once again, the pin tool comes around. Notice how I make this one horizontal. That's the proper way to use the pin tool. Same with this one. Make the selection. Command Shift M. Measurement 3 is 3.9 or essentially 3.95 or 4. 4.0. So Command D to get rid of the selection. I already know that the other thing I need is that I need these three lengths. I need the lengths of the system, systoles in centimeters. So I'll go up here to the eyedropper tool and as part of the eyedropper tool is the ruler tool right there and I'll select the ruler tool. 
and I'll go between these guides, hold the shift key down, which constrains this to a straight line. And so Command Shift M again, and they put the length way oh, over here on the right, 1.88 or 1.9 centimeters is the first length of the systole. The second one, click, hold the Shift key, move it over, Command Shift M, and the second length is 1.9 three so one point nine again and the third length hold the shift key down command shift in is one point nine three again one point nine so from that systolic ejection period be able to calculate the mean systolic gradient using the correction factor that came from measuring the full scale deflection and the information we just got. 29.4. That's the mean. Uh, okay. That sounds mm, so almost 30. That seems reasonable. So, and uh, the peak to peak is 35 and the and the measured one was so this looks like about a 30 millimeter mean systolic gradient. That's not bad. So the next thing will be to get the um, systolic ejection period, which I already know we'll need this, is four. Mm -hmm. this long period here, which will be from the entire length of the entire segment. which command shift M will be 15.1. Now this is going to be posted on uh, YouTube. Oh yeah. Okay, 40, sorry. Mean gradient of 40. 40. What? So the mean gradient is 40? Yeah. Okay, so the, the long measurement is 15.1. So you can get the systolic ejection period from that. You're getting 31? No, I just I did it really the right bus. So the systolic uh -huh. ejection period looks like it should be about 20... 22.6. All right. So as uh, usual, uh, it should be somewhere around one-third of 60. Uh, right? So 40 is going to be a, you can figure out, what, was the, what were the cardiac outputs? 3.8. So 3,800 3, for the cardiac outputs. You should be able to then figure out the uh, valve area from that. So this is the Gorlin equation that we're using essentially. 169. So 3,820 divided by 22.6 seconds. 169. How much? 169. Is the denominator, numerator? That's the numerator. That's the ABF. Yeah, 0.53 is the valve area. Yeah, because his output's not very high. So not a very high output will give you a very small numerator. And so the denominator is going to be, uh, what, 6.5 or so times 50 is going to be a fairly large yeah. number. A 76, basically. No, I'm, I'm sorry. 50. Whatever the square root oh, yeah. is, five point, it's, it's 6.3. 6.3 square root of 40. Yeah. 6.3 times 50. Car the cardiac output of 3,800 is really a killer. Oh. It's 0.5, right? 0.53. Yeah, 0.53. Yeah.